Okay, let's we can share uh, the fun of studying some math. So I na my name is Yao. I'm working for uh, a layer two named Fluent, and uh, I'm currently going to talk about some math in the paper circle story. And I will share some of these uh, insights I I learned from this. But okay, so. For the beginning, I would like to talk about uh, a few very general things about my understanding of why people study circle stack. Okay, so there, you, as as some of you know, there's Fry and the univariate E Stark, where we do with this this baby bear prime. So p equals. The reason we do this is because it has relatively nice. It's 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 the the concern is that we we have to have something called smoothness, and what is smoothness? It is something. So when you do FRI, what you really want to care is you have something like a domain, and the domain the best you can do FFT is you have something called two addic, which basically means you have something that. That let's say we have this this FB. This is a baby bear. Bear, okay? They have omega in the multiplicative group of the bear, and then omega to two to a big thing equals one in FB. So then you can do when this this omega goes all over. From you start with omega and go all over of this, then computing the evaluation of a, a polynomial over uh, the power of this omega becomes very efficient because you have FFT. So this 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 thing is called smoothness. Okay, the bad thing is this this is not a very nice number to compute if you you are working on this field. So people start working on this field called Merson field. So you have a nice prime, which is let me okay. So if you look at this thing, is the good thing is this thing has a very good representation because this is basically once. And the computation for for computer to compute the, the modulus of this prime is easy. However, we do not have similar smoothness of this uh, the, the, the multiplicative group. So this thing is not very smooth. So who Stark comes with the people trying to how can we work with this, this prime number and build something over this uh, with something we can make it smooth. And this is how we have circle, circle stark. And yeah, let's, so this is a very high level idea of why we want to have circle stark and why, it's, why this, this prime number is this. But then I will start talking about a very different topic. So let, let me leave it here. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the some some geometry. So it's totally different, but I think it helps you understand what does mean this. So the so okay, so at the beginning I would like to say that the the author of the of the paper, I think he is not being very honest. So you use all these words like curve and uh, line. So when he, he calls, okay, we have a projective line. So what exactly is a curve? And what exactly is a line? What he's talking about is something, okay, so he is very good at math, so he knows what he's talking about. He's kind of skipping all these details. So I think it may cause some confusion. And I like to work from here. So let's, talk about some very basic fundamental thing about uh, mass, which is the space. Okay, 
So everybody of us know the three-dimensional space is where we live. So we have a very simple mass space, the three-dimensional Euclidean space called R3. So this is the model we do we 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 conceptualize our real real life. And this is something you know you all very know. So how to see a point in this space? Well, this will be right? So we pick three real numbers and this can help us to know the it, it, it will fix a point here. So similarly, you can take, so I will call this a field. So that, so here we will have a field, k will be a field. When I don't want to really fix a field, I will use k as a field. So, so now we have the complex. And so a complex space will be. So k is the art. K is the K is the the, the 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 letter when I don't want to be specific on what field I want to talk, I will use K. But here we are very clear about what we're talking about. So there will be Z W, where Z and W in C. Uh, I think most people know what complex number is. Okay, so. There's another different type of space, which is a finite space. So here, we will have FB. OK, I, I'm, I'm going to believe that. I don't want to try another. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. OK. But OK, so this is also this, the field extension of FB, which is something like this. The C, it's a complex space. So we have two, so this means we pick three from our field. We have three, three coordinates. And this means we pick two. So this, the, the, the number here means how many things you pick. And this is called dimension. And Similarly, we have this uh, as the finite space. So you can also say, OK, I will have FP3, which is uh, A, B, C. And let's see if this is. So let's say we have an equation. Let's say something like uh, Q in the QR in FQ. Okay, sorry. This is a really bad notation. So let's say we have an equation. Sample, sample from Okay. Okay, let's say we have an equation. So what does this equation, so what does the zero points of, what does the, these, these points looks like if it satisfies this? Well, obviously, it will depend on which space you are talking about. Because for, okay, let's, let's see if it's in C here, you can have C2 or FP2. Or, I mean, you have your freedom to pick whichever space uh, you, you want these things to live. What I want to say is, it's really dependent on what you, this space, and they look really different. Okay, so let's, let's do this first. So, if we do this in R,
then it's a circle. And if we do this in FP, then, okay, let P equals seven, makes my life a little bit easier. I'm going to check what these numbers are. Okay, so I will draw this number and you will see this is not really a circle. So they are 0, 1, 1, 0, 2, 2, 2, 5, 5, 2, uh, 5, 5. And there's another me, oh yes, 6, 0, and 0, 6. If you really draw this, so we have a point here, a point here, a point here, a point here, and a point here, a point here, a point here, and a point here. So we have eight points, and this is what actually the name curve in the paper. So. The pictures, they show you these standard positions and the positions, it's, it's a scam. So what you really see the, if you, your at P is, uh, you, you like P equals seven, well, this is really the picture you should, you should look at. And also, if you have at P square, I also computed, but it will be rather very difficult to understand what exactly this thing is because you already have some very mysterious stuff. Like, so as you can see, if we have P equals seven, three is not really a point. You cannot start with anything three. But if you are here, you have a point like three is something like Z square plus something. So where, okay, so the point is if we would really like want to have enough solutions for this equation, so we would like to extend our, uh, our field. So as many of you know how we created the complex numbers, it is we add this i equals uh, square root of minus one, and if you have this, so this is called r joint with i, which basically means you, 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 you plug r i into r, and this is actually complex numbers. So the, the, the way people, uh, attending this, this field because they want to have solution for, fun, for equations like x squared equals y. So this is the, the motivation that people extend fields. And okay, this is one way to look at this, this equation. But there is another way and it matters and this is something projective will come in. Okay. So let me talk a bit about projective space. So we will call this, the space we talked before, call them affine space. It's really just a name. So affine space are the space you are familiar, so they are like, so generally you use this 
to represent this this a to represent a fine space, and you will you can be more specific about your your field, but in case we would like general talk about the affine space, we will use this letter. And there's another kind of space called projective space. It's the general is the letter is P. So projective space, it's a really weird space where the Okay, I'm going to talk about what is the point like in project space. To, for Pn, what you really need is, okay, generally the, the symbol is bracket. So you have x1, xn plus 1, or let's say we have x0 and xn. So this is a point in Pn, and we will identify if uh, there exists some C in k closure that cx not dot dot cxn so cx not equals y not cxn equals y n so uh, okay so they they are so they are really, if you compare them to the points in this space, they are actually lines. So let's see something in, okay, so there's another requirement that you cannot have everything zero. So, bad if all, x i equals zero. This is not a point. Okay. So, uh, so there, there's a relation with project space and uh, uh, yes, there's a relation with project space and affine space is people want to study the point of infinity when, when we have a curve. And we will show it later. But first, I also want to talk about something called component. So let's say we have P2, which is these things, x, y, z. OK, so this is a two-dimensional space. And we will have a normal space contained in P2, like let z equals 1, then we will have stuff like this. OK. Uh, e is not 0, then we have this. So as you can see, you can pick whatever values you like. So this is really a two. So if we let z equals not zero, then P2 is really A2. So which means this is a normal two-dimensional space we are familiar with. Then we have something this uh, is the, uh, okay. So as you can see, we don't, we are, we, have, we are letting z not equal zero. If I let x or y equal zero, we will have uh, the choice of 
which A2 will do. So we have actually three A2. And uh, I'm not going to talk about what they are, they, they are different, but let's, let's make this A2 our normal A2. So, uh, you have also this part. Then, this will be Yeah. This will be a line. A, a line. And this is actually not a line, this is a projective line. So if you look at the choice of the thing, you will see that we cannot let x or y equal zero, and if y is not zero, we can decompose this space into and y equals zero, then we have so we have this part and this part. If you look at of this, this is actually A1. And this is actually a point. So the relation of P1 and A, 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 P2 and A2 is that the project space, two-dimensional project space, is actually the, the normal space union with another line and a point. So, and this is P1. So, so generally, we have both an infinity point with a end. Well, this, this part is if you, if you live, you want to live here, then everything here is called the, the position, everything here are, are infinity, because you cannot see, use your, your A2 coordinate to represent any point here. So these, everything here is infinity. So, so my question was, so generally we have two infinity objects. One is the uh, infinity line, projective infinity line. In the whole space, you have the, the, this, this, this uh, infinity, this important infinity components. However, if you have a curve, have an equation, and the equation will hit a point here. Somewhere it will hit a point because it's a, it's, it's, it will reduce the dimension. So this has one dimension and then reduce the dimension one. So it will intersection with this area at some point. And that point will be the point of infinity of your equation. Because the, the circle below, right? The point. The, so the point will. Y equals to zero means the infinite point, right? Well, yes, this is the infinite point. And uh, A1, A21 is the infinite line. Yes, this is the infinite line. So generally, we'll have both, right? For, for P2, for case, yeah. this is the whole space. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you will have a curve in this space. So it will cut the space here. So here you will have a normal stuff, and here you have infinite stuff. And it will cut at a point. Yeah. So it's always that uh, 1, 0, 0, the, the, the triple is always the infinite point. It's not on your curve, probably. It's an infinite <laughs> point, but it's not on your curve, so we don't. So what we care is going to be somewhere here when our point hits. So I'm going so, to show so you. The, the point must be on the curve, right? Yes. So this, <laughs> this is point. the. In, so when we talk about point and infinity, what's, what you really want to say is whose point of infinity? So here, the point of infinity is if we live in this A2 then everything here is our point of infinity. And if we have a curve, we have a curve leaving A2, I'm going to show you that we find the point of infinity here. For, uh, ele for elliptic curve and for the circle curve. OK, uh, does anybody have any questions? Or is it something very, it's, it's too unorthodox to follow?
infinity point? It's a infinity point because everything here. So as long as you are not living here. But, but right now you, you didn't define any curve. So yes. why why you can define the infinite point? So it's the infinite point of this <coughs> this area. Okay. So if we take a P1, then we have a line with the infinity point. Yes, so we have a line with infinity point. This, so this, this P1, so the point, the, the line with the whole point is yes. called the projective line. Okay. So, okay, so you, you know there's a, 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 a word in the paper which is called projective line, and the projective line is really this. This, is, this whole thing is a projective line. Because this is not a whole projected space. And you know, a line is really, in general meaning, is, is, is in a fine space, it's a whole one-dimensional space, right? It's, it's R1. That's, that's our intuition about a line. And in project space, a projected line is P1. And this is, and this, this is the whole P1. You have to have this point infinity. So A22, uh, union with uh, P1 equals to uh, P2, right? Yes. Okay. So everything here is normal, and everything here will be something different. And, and if we take like P3 then, or, or A3, then we have an infinite, infinite plane, infinite plane. Yes, plane yes. Okay. Okay, let me show you a case. Uh, we will explain that the infinity notation and the infinity bar. So what are the differences between two notations? The difference is because there are two points, so you kind of two need to sum symbols. Two you have two infinity points. It's not guaranteed that you have only one infinite point. And uh, so when you have multiple infinity points, you and have how, 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 many, I mean, how many projective lines? You you cannot have projective lines because you that multiple, right? because okay let me, let me so you have a you are a curve and you inter and you intersection with a line which is a projective line and how many points you can intersect with a, a line with a curve it's finite because. If you intersect with, with the whole line, you will become the line. You have to be the line to intersect with the line infinite times. Or let's say the, the whole, whole intersection. You cannot have something, or well, intuitively, you are a curve, an intersection with a line, and your curve can only have something like this. You cannot have something, this kind of intersection. So you cannot have something, the dimension of the intersection cannot be High, uh, uh, higher than zero, because this is not really an intersection. So it will be, there will be no possibility of having this one root on the curve. On the I mean, you have some roots, but the root must be finite. Right. It cannot be the whole projective line. You cannot intersection with every point of the line. OK, so let's. Solve the equation. Okay, I will show you another, a, a very common example that everybody probably know if you study cryptography. That's the elliptic curve. So let's say we have a FP. Okay. So. If you want to make this thing a group, you have to add something called point of infinity. I think most, a lot of people already know this, this point of infinity. And how do you establish this kind of point? So the idea is that you solve this equation. This is your uh, elliptic curve. Can you y squared? Oh yeah, sorry, y squared. So this is your, your, your equation. And uh, let's, let's, and if you solve it, you will have some normal points. So it will be 
it will be some some norm. However, you 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 really what you really want to solve is we do some trick like this. So this thing is in a two. And let's let's change the equation into something else. So as you see, everything here are cubic, and this is a homogenized equation of this. And I promise you, if you solve this equation, okay, so now you, you, if you want to solve this equation, you can say, okay, let, let z equals 1, then you will have this equation back. And if you see, let z equals 0, then the solution of that case, let me see if we can solve it here. Okay, let z equals 0, what do you get? Is yeah, yes. So you will have x. You will have. So when x is zero, y cannot be zero as our and z is zero. So the only non-zero is, is is y. So you will have a solution. This is a point infinity on your elective curve. Okay. So this is how you get the point infinity, and. The point infinity, which will ultimately makes your 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 EC a, a group. Otherwise, your group is 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 incomplete. Okay, so. so where do you get the z polynomial from that you factor into? What? Where do you get the z? Z is zero. What do you mean? Where uh, you get z? So this is called a homogenization. So yeah, when you have something, that. yes, and then. How did you create the equation? You like took. This is the equation, and you make up everything which is not the highest power with z. So this is a, a, a constant, so you multiply with z cube, and this is something, it's, it's, it's degree one, then you multiply with z squared. So this is called homogenization. And if you really think about, this is actually what we do when we have a piece, so this is our a square, and if we want to put it into p square, the, the two-dimensional projective space, this is our component when z is, is not zero, and we have, they start, we can establish this equation to identify this with uh, an object in the projective space by doing this. And this will provide us the solution we cannot see, which is this point, if you live in this space, because we cannot have z equals zero in this space. Okay? So, okay, so the interesting part is here is you can cheat with circle. So circle is something different. As we all know, we need this to make the elective group, but in circle, it's not the case. You don't really need. Uh, in circle's case, we have this equation. Circle. And we will have the, uh, what? The homogenized, homogenized equation. The interesting part is, if, if we z squared, z squared, sorry, z squared. So the solution of the point infinity is going to be x squared plus y squared equals zero. So let's let's solve it in z z equals one. And then z equals zero. Let z equals zero. Then we have x squared plus y squared equals zero, which essentially saying uh, x over y. square plus one equals zero, so that gives you y x equals, y. 
Yes. So basically, so as you can see, this will be the two infinite points. And the interesting part is you do not need these points to build the circle group. So circle group elements will move the circle group. OK, so let's say we have this. this OK, let, let me redraw this. It's, it's, it's something like this. So these points will have group action, and the group action will move the point here, this picture here, and as we have two points in infinity here. And we move points here to here. So it moves points here. So points from here will, after the group action will be here, and the points from here after the group action will be here. So you can pretend that you don't really, you never see these points because your group cannot move your, so this is your group. Uh, I think this is a symbol. And this is a space your group can act. And so you don't really need these two points to build your group. These two points will be useful because somewhere in the paper we will need to an analyze the, the, the behavior, the functions over here because of some mass stuff. So they have to introduce it here to tell you we have these extra points. Okay, to put it in very, very deep mass words, the project space will make, so this, this whole thing will be a projective. Uh, so when we have, uh, sorry, so when we have an algebra closure of our, so when we have FP and we take the closure of it, this usually, if we, our basis field is the closure, then it will have a very nice property. And with this closure, we have solutions here. And then we will use these properties to prove something. But let's not worry about that. This is some. This is what I'm talking today. It just helps you to understand what exactly the, the, the author is saying about these this definitions. I mean, we cannot work through all this very hard math today, but it's really give you a feeling about how you really accept. Yes. So we don't have y. Y, y is not equal to zero, right? What do you mean why it's not equal to zero? When we divided by y squared. Yes, because when we have that z equals zero, then we, we, we can't have y equals zero, but if y is not, y is zero, then x can only be one. Uh, x cannot be one, because then you cannot really make your equation equivalent, because this will be one, and this will be zero, and one plus zero is never, so you cannot have y be, be, be zero. So that's how you can do that. So generally, when you solve in here, you really need to use these conditions. Not everything can be zero. You, you must be have something non-zero. This is how it works. OK, so. Yeah, yeah just a quick question. Yes. You, you, didn't, you, you mentioned that you, you draw the, so, um, so my question was uh, the solo group plus the two infinite points. Yes. So. What it would be? Is the, I don't it's think you can. It's, it's not really. I mean, if you you have this. Uh, okay, so if you want to draw the picture, what you can draw is if you solve this. Let's say we are in R. Okay, so let's say we are in C. Then you can draw, okay, you cannot, but you pretend you can, and you can get every point, because this C is already closed, you can get the whole thing. It will be a very complicated picture, and you will use, these, these points do exist on your curve. So if you really can imagine, imagine how two-dimensional complex space work, you will see these two points in your complex space. Okay, another question. So, um, is there any group? I mean, the larger group kind of the subgroup is a subset of that group. For example, the group L. So, 
I so, think you can construct that thing, but I think in the paper they use this group. Yeah, so so the, 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 the group elements are here. And the, the whole thing is you have two spaces the group elements can act on. So it, it, you kind of need the, the invariant. So basically what it means is you cannot move something out from here. And you can use these properties to uh, prove, uh, prove the, the property of your space. And okay, so let's let's look at these group actions. And what I would like to show today is how these claims hold, and 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 some interesting. Uh, I don't know. So you can sh I will show you why it's called the uh, rotation. And it, it does something like a rotation, but I would what I'm say. Okay, let me first talk about the group. So if you look, so let's, let's just use this, this definition. So P is in our group. And P, the action of P which is defined by Okay, this is the uh, action of P over, because we have point infinity, so we don't really want to make a difference between the action and the, the stuff we act on because they are somehow different. So why it's a rotation? Okay, let's write this as a vector. And let's make some matrix. So let's compute the matrix that you have the matrix vector multiplication and equals px dot x minus py minus y and px dot y equals py dot x. And what is this? So we will have px dot minus py and py and px. And if you really look at this vector, and you think about this, when we have middle school geometry, we have this. We have a, we have a, we have a angle, which is theta, and x equals cosine theta, and y equals sine theta. And this is actually the rotation matrix if you rotation by theta. So that's why it's called rotation. And if you, and y, j, and we also have J maps. And this gives you minus theta. So J maps your theta to minus theta. So this is where I believe these names come from because if you use uh, this, this geometry in R, you actually got it's really a rotation. But it's, it's really not a rotation. I mean, so, uh, what do I say? So what I mean is this explain you how names from this comes from and uh, it probably helps you to remember how this, have a feeling about how these things works. So we also have this flip and the last part I would like to show is that how J, P is really the inverse P. So, as you can see, it's of, of, of course J of J, P equals P, but what I would like to show you is that how J of P is really the inverse of P. So J P equals P 
of x minus py and jp x on is so we have Okay, so this will be, the x part will be, so px times x, so it will be px dot px dot x minus py dot y plus, uh, because this is, a minus and we have a minus sign here so, so it will be plus uh, p p y dot yes yeah, dot p y minus p x dot uh, what's a y here it's p x dot y plus p y dot x Okay, let's let's check for x part. So this is really px square dot x minus px py y plus px py y plus py square x. E, and this is really and you use the you use the, the equation because px squared plus py squared equals x. And you can check this uh, also works for the y coordination. And I think it's doing this kind of math, like checking this uh, small uh, claims from the paper really helps you to understand how this thing works. And yeah, so this, this is going to be the easy part today. Well. I'm, I, I was more ambitious, and I would like to talk about the, the Riemann rock space and the properties of, of these of this polynomials there. But I think we got our time today. So I think I would like to finish here, and let's pick another time if you really want to talk about this Riemann rock space functions there. OK, that's it today. And any questions? Okay, you can clap. <laughs> and, and if you have any questions, you can ask here. So what is a DJP exactly? So, so J is um, it's action over P. It maps the P to the J of P, which is inverse of the P. Okay. And the T is, let's pretend we have, okay, so let's start here. Yeah. So this is the point. Yeah. Okay, so it should really be a point x dot y. Yeah. So this is x of p on x, y. So it will move a point somewhere, and we get a new point here. Yeah. And this will be the action of j of p. So j of p will be another action. Yeah. And so we, we use this action, so t converts a group element into an action, and we get this thing x on the result of p. Yeah. And what we would like to show you is that it will move t of p back to x, y. T of P, X, Y, back to X, Y. So this is J of P is really as an action. It's the inverse of this action. And what's the first line P belongs to? The this is circle. This is circle. So and this is the, 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 the space you pick where your circle lives. So this is FP. I have P, okay. So when you have FP square, you will have more points in the circle. Yeah. So you have to be very specific about What's your, 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 your group is? Any, any other questions? I mean, you, you can stare at the, the board and doing some calculation yourself. I think it, it helps. I have a question but, uh, uh, about, is 
the matrix that we wrote p x minus p y then p y p x uh, does it have a property of zero matrix that we added to any matrix? Only my zero matrix. Uh, Oh, well, what you would probably say is a neutral element. So yeah. it's, 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 it, it preserves everything. It will be the identity matrix. So when you want to use matrix to represent the element, what you really is, the identity is a multiplica multiplicative identity. So if the neutral element, so the mutual element they claim is this, And the representation will be, which is the identity okay. matrix. Actually, like we can prove it directly, like the result at the end, Px square plus Py square, it's ultimately the determinant of that matrix. Yes. So we can directly say that there is no yeah, 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 exactly. So if we, oh yeah, so you 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 you, you multiply yeah. like the two matrix and you got identity in the end. It's it's really popular uh, operation. In Mathematical education yeah. that we multiply and divide the identity matrix to prove inverses. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's also a branch of a mass called representation theory studying how you represent group elements as matrix. So you can have a systematic approach to study this if you really like. Uh, what, what else? Any questions? Yes? What? Okay, I think I, I, I have very heavy workload right now, so I have to answer my boss first. So <laughs> it's going to probably, the fastest I can give is in the end of this week. Okay, I also want to show you about, I'll talk about this picture. This, this, so th there's this, this, this general position of this twin side. I, I don't think it's true. I mean, if you check my, what I draw, it's, it's something, I mean, I think the, the author should be honest about how he draws these pictures because as we draw, our circle looks something like this. <laughs> It's, it's not really a circle. And it, it, whatever, however you point, pick points from the circle, it will not look like something like this. What I believe is he draw is in the real place. So he, he draw something in R2. And he show us, he draw these things. And they, I mean, you can have, so the, the correspondence between R and FB, I, in general, it would be coincidence. You cannot really rely on anything R to understand something having FP. I think the best F is also I would suggest you to play with something a, a, a software called Sega Mass. Yes. So Sega Mass will help you to really compute. So I, I really actually compute uh, the FP, FP square and FP, FP cube. I compute three of these uh, lo the, the curves and really see how it grow, grows and how these point what these points are. And eight, that's, I think that's a place where you build the correct intuition about how these curves behave. Because in the end, you actually need, if you really want to work with this, you have to understand how these, the arithmetics over this group work. And that's, that's, you can only learn the correct intuition by sigmas. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.